In the last tutorial, we discovered how to use a range mapper node to convert one range of numbers into another, and by doing so we were able to make a cube object move at half the speed and half the distance relative to another. In this tutorial, we're going to do something slightly different and take things a little bit further. I used the word ratios to describe what was happening with the cubes, and, well, what else uses ratios? Perhaps a very good example has got to be gears. So what we have on the screen are two cogs. We've got a small cog and a larger cog. The small cog has 10 teeth, the larger cog 20. So we've got a 2 to 1 gear ratio, because every time the small cog rotates twice, the larger cog will need to rotate once. Another important factor here is that when one cog is rotating clockwise, the other must rotate anti-clockwise. So how do we go about setting this up? Well, if we have a look in our Expresso editor, I've already set up an expression in here to show you a way of doing it. What we've got here, we've taken cog1, we've got its rotation b, which is the rotation that we're going to need to use if we just select rotation here, and we select cog1. Rotation b, so that would make this work. As you can see, I've got it set up and it does actually work, but I'm going to go through it with you. So we've got rotation B set up, which we convert it from radians to degrees, as we've done before, and we've divided by 2, we're using our math divide here, so we've divided by 2, and we've negated the result, so the negate actually turns positive values, I've got these two result nodes here to illustrate this, the negate changes a positive value into a negative value, and vice versa, so we've put that in to actually make the second cog or the larger cog rotate anti-clockwise or clockwise depending on what the small cog is actually doing. We've then converted back from degrees to radians and given the result to cog 2. So that's how that expression can be set up. Now while I'm not saying that this is the wrong way to do this, it's not the easiest way and it's by no means the tidiest. The range mapper is absolutely ideal for this. So the next thing we're going to do is show you how to set this up. So I'll come down to my menu here and just bring the range mapper into the Expresso editor. And we're going to replace the divide node and the negate with just the range mapper because it has everything in it to actually make this work. Now we know that we've got a 2 to 1 gear ratio there. So in our parameters, I'll just plug that in there actually so that I've got that sorted out. We need our input lower to be 0 and we're going to set our input upper to 360. 360 degrees being one complete revolution of our small cog, so that's what that's set up for. We'll leave our output lower at zero, and our output upper will set to 180. That way we've set up our 2 to 1 gear ratio, because now every time our small cog rotates through one complete revolution, our bigger cog will have only rotated through half of one revolution, which is exactly what we need. So that's our range mapper set up so far. If we come over to our node properties, you can see down here that we've got an option for reverse. And if we check this box, we're now causing the output stage to become the opposite of the input. We're doing the job that the negate was doing. In actual fact, you might as well say we've negated the need for it. So now, if we can take away this and this, just take those two away, and we plug in our range mapper node there, as you can see the cog snapped away and then snapped back but now it does exactly what it did before so there's another really good use for the node, it's absolutely superb for doing gears very very easy, far more easy than having to divide first and then play around with negate, I mean alright that's not difficult but it's, it's just nowhere near as elegant, I'm sure you'll agree so if you're doing gears always go for the range mapper node, it's ideal for them. That concludes our second tutorial on the range mapper node, and hopefully it's given you further insight into how useful and versatile this node can actually be. We will be returning to range mapper nodes in future tutorials, when among other things we'll learn how to make a funicular railway. But for now, keep experimenting, have a lot of fun, and I'll see you on the next tutorial.